What's up guys? So yes, this is a little bit of a different build, but I'm about to show you how to make the coolest building block set that no one sells. So how I came up with this idea was whenever my kids were younger, they loved Legos. They loved Legos, Lincoln Logs, really anything that they could build anything with. So once they grew out of that, I wanted them to keep their imagination going, keep building, keep being creative. Basically taking the same concept of Lincoln Logs and Legos and making it bigger. For one thing, those Lincoln Logs are this much. Yeah, well that kid looks happy. When you can build this entire 80 piece kit out of five two by fours. So not only do kiddos get to use their imagination, they get to learn how to use the basic hand tools. So what I did with my kiddos was I created this kit, had a little tote full of bolts, nuts, and washers. Also a couple of cheap end wrenches and a ratchet. And if you're interested in the business side of this and how to sell these kits, who to sell these kits to, hang around to the end and we'll cover all of that. So let's get started. So the longest piece that I'm gonna be using for this project is gonna be 24 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half. And the reason why is if you have any type of a bow or a twist that runs the length of the board, every time that you cut that board, it's essentially taking away roughly 50% of that bow or that twist. So by knowing that the 24 inches is gonna be the longest part that we're actually gonna use, not gonna hurt a thing to cut these in half. It'll take out half of that bow or twist and be much easier for the next step. So on this one, I want you to actually watch what I'm talking about with the bow. This board is actually bowed up about a half of an inch off of my table here. So what is gonna happen is whenever I make this cut, this side's gonna go in, this side's gonna go in, and it's gonna pinch my blade. So when you have a bow board like that, let's flip it over. Now it's sitting flush, and if it does decide to shift, it's gonna shift this way, instead of in, pinching your blade. So remember, this board had a half of an inch bow to it. So just by cutting it in half, we have taken almost all of that bow out. There's maybe an eighth of an inch. The longest part that we're gonna be making is gonna be 24 inches long. So whenever we cut this again, that half inch bow that we originally had should disappear. So our boards are cut and we're ready to head over to the table saw. You do not have to have a bunch of fancy equipment for this build. The set that I made years ago was done on a job site table saw. And when we get to the sanding, all of that was also done with a hand sander. So whenever you're making tall cuts, no matter how good your dust collection is, you will always have a little bit in the air. So let's make sure to put on our hearing protection and dust mask. So now that we have a material cut down to four foot lengths, we are going to knock this rounded edge off. So in order to do that, we are going to set our saw for three and three eighths. That's going to allow us to shave an eighth of an inch off the edge, getting rid of that rounded edge and give us a flat edge to work with. So now that we have a straight edge on all of our material, we're ready to start ripping this down to an inch and a half. Now first, I'm gonna pull out four of these boards to make a three quarter inch stock. We won't be using all of this material for the three quarter inch, but we don't want to end up short. We have six of our four foot boards cut down to one and a half by one and a half. That is leaving us with four more. So what I'm going to do with these four is Two of these I'm going to turn completely into three quarter inch stock. So they'll be three quarter by an inch and a half. These other two I'm going to cut off an inch and a half and then whatever is left I'm going to get a couple of more three quarter inch boards off of those. And I'm doing this to maximize the material. So now that we have all of our parts cut, we actually have 14 pieces of four foot long, three quarter inch. So now let's start getting everything laid out to drill our holes and cut these things down to size. To start with, you know how I like jigs. So for this kit, I'm gonna do six inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, and 24 inch pieces, 10 of each. So since we have used standard two by fours, we have to account for the curve of the saw blade. So we cannot cut our pieces right on those marks. 
We're gonna knock a half of an inch off of each of those measurements. No, the saw curve is not a half of an inch, but we're gonna keep everything in half inch increments. So we're gonna have a five and a half inch piece, an 11 and a half inch piece, a 17 and a half inch piece, and then we'll have a 23 and a half inch piece. You'll see why I did this here in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the different lengths on the miter saw just to make a drill template. So just using two pieces of scrap material or just some edging that came off earlier, I cut the four different sizes out that we mentioned to make a template for each different size. So we're going to start with our five and a half inch piece. Yes, I could actually use this craft mat if I wanted to to make these marks, but I'm going to go ahead and lay it out with this ruler. I'm going to start with three quarters of an inch in, and then from there I'm going to make a mark at every inch. And whenever you get to this last mark, it will actually leave you three quarters of an inch on this side, as well as three quarters of an inch on the front side, allowing you to stack and actually make a square structure. And we're just gonna repeat this process for the rest of our jigs. So then we'll go to our 11 and a half. We'll go three quarter in, and then an inch spacing from there all the way to the end. And again, based on these measurements, that leaves us with three quarters of an inch to the end and three quarters of an inch to the beginning. So perfect for overlapping. And then the rest of these are squared at one inch. So you get the point, we'll do that for the rest of our jigs. The next thing that we need to do is measure three quarters of an inch up the jig. That way we can find our center. Since this is an inch and a half, we want it to be at three quarters. So make a mark at three quarters on both sides and use a straight edge to go all the way down your workpiece. Now you can either use one of these little pocket rolls or a square to make your marks all the way across. And here's a little tip. Always put your pencil down, bring your square to the pencil to make your mark. Okay. So now we'll know to drill at each one of these intersections. And we'll do the exact same thing for each one of these. So now that we have all of our jigs marked out and they're ready to drill, let's go ahead and cut all of our pieces to length. So keep in mind, we cannot just start cutting boards or we will run out of material. They actually need to be cut with a certain cutting layout in order to get all of the parts. So the best way to figure this out is either to lay it out before you start cutting or find an online calculator that will tell you the best layout to make your cuts. Or for anyone interested, I'm gonna make a cheap cut layout for all of these pieces. So I'm gonna throw it on my Etsy shop. So for example, the last board that we cut, it came out to where we can get two 17 and a half inch boards as well as an 11 and a half inch board without any waste. So let's finish cutting the rest of these boards. We're gonna have 10 of each size in the inch and a half, the inch and a half, as well as the three quarter and an inch and a half. So once you have all of your parts cut, and yes, this kit will have 80 different parts, it's time to start drilling some holes. So there's several different options that you can use. I'm just kidding. I don't have another camera over here. I've just seen other people do it and it kind of looked fancy, so I thought I'd try it. There are several options that you can use whenever you are drilling the holes for this. Okay, so you can use just a regular drill bit, which is great because it kind of augers the material out, or you can use a spade bit. And what I'm gonna be using for this, because I'm gonna be using the drill press, is I'm gonna use a spade bit. The spade bit actually leaves a little bit of a cleaner finish on the edge because of the grain of the material. Whereas this twists the grain out and kind of leaves a lot of splinters, this cuts as it goes and does not. So I'm gonna be using a 5 16 spade bit. The reason why I'm gonna be using a 5 16 spade bit is because I'm gonna be using quarter inch bolts for this. So I picked up a couple pounds of quarter inch bolts, nuts, and washers that I'll be including in this, as well as cheap end wrenches and ratchets. The kids love it. But back to the bit, the reason why I'm using a 5 16 versus a quarter inch, because the bolt is a quarter inch, is because it makes the holes tight. So if you're building something and you're looking for something to just fit perfect, almost where you have to hammer it in, use a quarter of an inch. But this we want to be able to slide in with our fingers and then they can put their tools on there and tighten this up. There's several different ways that you can cut these holes. 
You can do it this way with one of these little babies. It's just a drill guide jig, but you will not be using a spade bit for that. You would just have to use a regular drill bit. Spade bit will not fit into these holes. Or another option is one of these little babies. And this thing's actually really handy. This is a portable drill guide. So what you could do is actually screw this down to your work surface, chuck a drill up into it, and essentially you have a mini drill press. These things come in really handy for like in pieces and things like that that will not fit under a drill press if you have one so check out one of these they're like 30 bucks i'll throw a link into the description you could also use one of these instead of just using a regular jig now you can use one of these the very first set that i ever made i used just a drill and a jig that i had made but tools have came a long way and it will be a heck of a lot simpler with one of these. But like I said, for this video, I'm actually going to be using a drill press. So with the drill press, we'll be using our jigs just a little bit different. Okay, so we're gonna start by cutting the holes in all of our jigs. So anything that we have marked up earlier to make a perfect jig, we're gonna cut the holes in those. And you should end up with something like this. What we're gonna do with this jig is just set it right on top of the material that we're about to cut. And you can either use a pencil or I like to use something that's the exact diameter of the hole. So in this case, 5 sixteenths, and something with a sharp tip. And that's all that I'm going to do is make sure my edges are lined up. And then I'm just going to make a mark all the way down. So instead of having to measure this board like we did before, in each direction to make lines to find center and all that, we're using our jig to do just that. If you'll notice, I don't know if you can see, but there's tiny little marks all the way down. So those little dents are gonna serve two purposes. It's actually gonna tell you exactly where you need to drill, and it's also gonna give you a starting point for your bit, and it will keep the bit from walking. Usually I would use something like this, just to make a little dent to keep a bit from walking. But in this case, as long as it's a sharp point, you can even use a nail. That will get the job done. So once we have all of our jigs cut and ready, we're ready to start drilling. So if you're using a drill press, you know how I am about jigs. So let's make one. That's all that I've done with this one is taken a two by four, taken some scrap pieces and made an inch and a half channel. All the material that we're gonna be cutting will be an inch and a half. So let's make a guide for it. So with this guide, I can center the drill press three quarters of an inch in. I know that I'll always have a straight line, even if my marks get off just a bit. And again, like I mentioned before, the very first set that I ever made, I did everything by hand and they turned out just fine and the kids loved it. But if you're looking to mass produce things, you may have to look into a little drill press or at least the portable drill guide. So if you've made it this far into the video, obviously I'm doing something right. So do not forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell for more. So this is what you end up with. Pretty neat. And actually, if you wanted to clean each one of these holes up a little bit besides sanding, you could actually use one of these countersink bits just to knock the little edge off. But you have to be careful with a soft pine these edges can actually grab. But if you're just wanting a smooth edge, chuck this up into your cordless drill and run it in reverse. Yes, you heard me right, reverse. And it will actually clean and knock off the edges versus risking the sharp edges pulling out more fibers. So let me show you what I mean. To with your drill in reverse, it just knocks off just a little bit of that that was sticking out. So this one's been cleaned, this one has not. If you run it forward, even though you're countersinking because of the soft pine and the grain, it's still leaving this tear out. So again, that's just a little tip. If you run it in reverse, it will actually clean the edges and make them smooth versus any type of tear out and splintering. And you don't have to do this at all. Just some sanding will most likely take care of almost every bit of that. But if you really want it to look professional, I would add a little bit of countersinking just to smooth this out. Now for the sanding, it can be done just with a hand sander. The first set of these that I ever made, I actually did every single piece with the hand sander. It's all I had. And there we have it. Perfectly smooth. Edges are knocked off. This piece is ready to roll. But if you had a belt sander of any kind, that would be perfect because we're wanting to knock these edges off. So anything sharp, because 
theoretically kids are going to be playing with this anything sharp and anything that may leave a splinter so we want to smooth this out really nice So with no sharp edges, no splinters left, the holes have been cleaned out. Now we have a perfect kid-friendly building block set. And this thing is awesome. Well guys, I hope that you have enjoyed that video. I love this kind of stuff. I love these builds. Anything that can get a kiddo's imagination, creativity flowing, I'm all about. And that is what this is about. Legos are awesome. Lincoln Logs, they are awesome. They are just way too expensive. But this is even a step above all of those. Not only is this a cool build, if you have kiddos, if you have grandkiddos, build them this. It's five two by fours and let their imagination and creativity go wild, okay? So do that. But if you're interested in selling these, you're going to have to sell these for a decent price. The time that it takes to drill all of these holes and sand everything out is quite a bit of time. This is not a small item, but this is a unique item. I've never seen one like it before. There may be something like it out there, but I haven't seen it besides the standard little small kits. And you saw how expensive those were. Over $100 for a set of Lincoln logs that, you know, the logs are this big. So you need to hit on that. Stage things up just like this. People will spend money on something that is unique. It's always the same story, especially around Christmas, especially around birthdays. What do you buy a child that has everything? You buy them this. Just like I have said a hundred times, people will spend money on their kids and their grandkids. And especially if it is something that is gonna get them away from video games and into their creative space. So as far as the pricing, that's gonna be up to you. What you consider your time value of money. Okay, so how long it takes you to make this? What tools did you have to make this? With the two by fours and then the nuts and bolts, I probably had around $30 in this. People will pay hundreds of dollars for an 80 piece set of something like this. Also, what I did with my kids is I didn't want the washers, nuts, and bolts falling around different places. So I built a PlayStation for them out of two by fours, two by four edges. And then I just put a piece of fiberboard at the bottom. So I had a bottom and edges. So while all of these parts were inside of the play area, if they dropped anything, it just fell in the bottom of this and it was no big deal. Didn't end up in the carpets or rolling down the hall or anything like that. That's another idea. You could put that into the Christmas. kit. But if you are watching this around Christmas time, it is the perfect time to take orders. Build a kit of these. The first one will always take the longest, but build a kit, advertise these things, and you will sell them. Because like I said, people are always looking for something different. Something that they do not offer at the stores. They do not offer this you're gonna offer this and you're gonna sell this. And another thing is, is you can make this customizable. I drilled all of the holes an inch apart. If you want to save a little bit of time, you can make them an inch and a half. You can make them two inches apart. I just wanted to make them an inch apart that way that there was more things that they could do with that. And you can also change the lengths. These were just the lengths that I thought that the kids could actually build something big like this movable and actually feel like that they have created something without it being too big. So 23 and a half inches is the longest piece. That's not that bad. All of it can be taken down and stored really easy. And again, staging is going to be a big part of this. Stage it up like this, build something, have fun. I mean, I was like a big kid in here putting all of this stuff together, but have fun with it. And you could even offer different levels of kits. You could offer a 20 piece, 40 piece, 80 piece, 100 piece, whatever that you would like. The way that I've shown you how to build these is dirt cheap to do. The main expense is going to be your time. Not only do you get the benefit of making a sell, but you get the benefit of knowing that you are helping to unlock the potential and the creativity of our future generation. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope that you took away sometimes the easiest things, which is literally drilling holes in wood, can be the most profitable. So here is your homework for next time. We're reverting back to childhood here, taking a pile of nothing, Lincoln Logs, Legos, things like that, and creating something. That is why those toys are so nostalgic, is it creates memories. So go out there, take a pile of wood that is nothing, and create something. And that is what our makers community is all about. So until next time, guys, we'll see you. All of your parts cut, and yes, there's 80 D. And yes, there's 80 D. 80 D. And yes, there's 80 D.